अभी तो सो दैट्स लाइक द एवरेज स्टॉप लॉस रेंज दैट आई हैव ऑब्वियसली यू माइंड सेइंग इट अगेन फॉर द रिकॉर्डिंग या माय एवरेज स्टॉप लॉस रेंज फॉर डीजे इज लाइक 10 टू 35 पिप्स गोल्ड इज गोना बी 35 to 65 pips sometimes 25 pips and silver is about about the same thank you bro yeah yeah no problem uh raul oh, what's good bro uh yo uh, how to count pips on silver like uh, uh what's good? so you just move the decimal point back one this is normally what i do you can also use a session indicator so if this is 2510 pips this is 251 pips uh, so it's like gold right yeah practically uh, okay Thank you. you can always just use the position size calculator to make things a little bit easier for you. Thanks, bro. Yeah, no problem. Yo, one more thing. Oh, did you cut the JJ cell? Uh, no, nah, it was too early. Like it's you know Asian. When I want to wait for the cell on GJ's, I pull yeah. back back into one fifty five, then we'll look for price to go short again. This is like drop. What is this like? From this point to this point, hundred pips. I'm talking about like if you go on the four hour, four hour. Talking about this? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. This is uh, that drop. No, I actually bought yesterday. Oh really? Uh, after the break yeah. of section on the thirty minute. Yeah, but I ended up getting out at like a pretty much a break even, like a one to point eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, all uh, yesterday I bought I bought silver. Uh, let me show you my position. Go if you go to silver. Right here. Uh, yeah, yeah. I bought after that uh, double bottom. Right here. No, no, no. D down, go down, down. Yeah. yeah, that double button. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I cut. Uh, I cut one to seven. Uh, yeah, but that one. Pretty clean trade. Is it? It's like. What do you think, so? I mean, it's pretty clean trade. More important is that you make money. I mean, you have structure off of this area here. As long as price maintained above this structure, you can look to buy. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, because you were buying a previous resistance, now turn it to support. So, I mean, what's more important that you make money? Thanks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else got any other questions? I, I mean, at this point, like in terms of like a breakdown, like it's as simple as we got to wait for a pullback for gold, probably back into 1950. GJ is the same thing. We got to wait for a pullback to look to short back into like 155, 500. And silver, silver is a little bit different because now silver is trading at resistance. So um, we would have to wait with silver. I don't want to see like a cleaner break above, pull back into resistance, or maybe like even a pullback into this area right here, like all of this. We can look to buy in here. Let's say price up to twenty five. But yeah. So anybody else have any questions or want me to answer? Hey Raul. Good, bro. Hey, when you started trading, you yeah. used to take a lot of trades. Like you blew your account doing that at the beginning. Yeah, over trading. Yeah, I did that today, man. With the, uh, I did it with US thirty. Yeah, over trading and over leveraging will kill your account quick. Yeah, I did that. Wait, you just gotta limit yourself to the amount of trades that you could actually take. Because, you know, I just I just started because, you know, I just got out of federal prison. So it's the first time I was being profitable. Yeah. It kept dropping and I just kept trading and trading and trading. And I just, uh, I almost blew my whole account. Damn. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's part of like the learning curve, you know, getting over like that over leveraging, over trading phase. It's part of the yeah. learning curve. All right, I just I just wanted to know that because I was like, damn, I felt like a dumbass. Yeah, I mean, again, like it's part of the learning curve, you know. Like I'm sure a lot of us in here have gone through it. You just gotta limit the amount of trades that you could take. So in my example, yeah. I'm only allowed to take three trades a day, right? And yeah, I gotta. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend like unless if you're scalping, I wouldn't recommend going above three trades a day. I gotta discipline myself with that. It, it, it's all a learning curve, you know, with time you'll be able to do it. Yeah, I just been out for four months, so I just started, so. Yeah, bro, just with time. With time, you're good. All right, man. Thanks, bro. Yeah, bro. You're right.
What's good, bro? I got a question. So about GJ. So I know we're waiting to see that pull back to 155, uh, 400. But let's just say price does not pull back. Like it goes all the way back up, but it doesn't reject that area. When would you actually change your bias to a buy on the four hour time frame? Would you wait until it breaks structure above 156, 500? Or yeah. would you? I, I wouldn't look to buy GJ unless it <laughs> breaks above 156, 500. Not even 156. Because once GJ gets back above this area, it's mm -hmm. trading higher. What I would mm -hmm. wait for is maybe something like this, and then that's when I would change my bias. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Thanks. But I, uh, for GJ to sell, I want to see it maintain under this 150. Okay. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. What about on GU? GU. So the thing with GU is okay. it's consolidating for quite some time and it's starting to break under this area. So definitely looking to go short at this point in time, back down into here long term. Um, again, like it's almost like the same concept. I would like to see a clear break, a retest, and then look for price to continue to start trading lower. Uh, but yeah, but there's uh, there's definitely going to be some form of like buying pressure here. So we may not even like actually see. GU drop until later. Yeah. That so is, that, under here is when we'll see the real drop. Yeah, it got to get past that area first. Yeah. It, it, like, it, there's pretty clean traffic for GU. Like, once it breaks under this area, we're going to go down to this area right here. Uh, which but... is like 70 ish pips away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but. Can you uh, give us like a live breakdown of top down analysis uh, on any pair? Let me see which one. So I guess we could do like GJ. So if you look at GJ on the weekly time frame, obviously we know that there's resistance all throughout this range here. And the way that this current weekly candlestick is forming is price is currently breaking under the lows of the last two weeks. So there we can already start to see a transition within price. Notice on the last few weekly candles, we see price actually forming higher lows. Now we actually see those higher lows being completely taken out. And now GU or GJ has formed this lower low at this point, right? Along with that, we look at the highs of the week and the highs are just getting lower and lower as GJ is rejecting this area of resistance, which clearly is showing us some form of selling pressure. Now, the only thing that we'd actually have to pay attention to would be this area over here on GJ, right? We have to see what price does when it gets down to this 153, 900 level to see if price will break that level or continue to actually trade lower. But we know that price is rejecting this area of resistance, so we can expect price to go down to the nearest area of support. Now, if we go down to like a daily time frame, we could see this area a little bit better. It's not like as exact, but we know Again, like when it comes down to supply and demand, support and resistance, it's an overall zone, right? So GJ to get down there still is about another, let's call it 100 pips away. So now we have to identify that we've already identified where we want to see price actually travel to is how we could take advantage of the projection that we have with price. And the only way I see we can actually take advantage of a move like this is for price to actually give us a pullback. Then I ask myself, where could we see price possibly pull back to? The nearest area of resistance that had just been broken is this one. So I would like to see price come back into this area and give me that rejection. Do I think price is gonna pull all the way back up into here? No, I don't think so. Just because of the way price is trading right now. At the end of the day, we never know, right? But this would be the best area to actually look to sell GJ again before looking for price to continue to go down to our overall target being in between this 153,800 and this 154 zone. So that's how I would like to take this GJ position. But at this point in time, you know, there's too much volume and it doesn't look like anything is really going to stop uh, GJ right now. Although, again, I would like to see a pullback into this range. That would be the best trading setup that I would see uh, with GJ. Thank you. Hey, Raul, just, just on that pair, um say that it goes back up to retest that 155 yeah it breaks above how do you know if it's um if it's a fake out or not 
because then say that like it goes above and closes above in the four four hour and or like the eight hour candle or whatnot but then it goes right down into your direction how do you differentiate if it's going to go back up to the nearest zone or it's going to actually go down into the direction that we anticipated so are you talking about go up to here or just go straight down to here or go up and actually break above so like then eventually coming back down so like if we wanted to eventually come back down we wouldn't want to see price break above this overall zone we don't want to see price kind of maintain itself under this area right now once price starts to break above it the only thing to do is simply wait right all you want to do is just kind of sit <laughs> sit on your hands and wait as long as you possibly can until price does one of the two either come back down and into the zone and start rejecting where you could then look to actually buy or wait for price to actually come back under give you a little bit of a pullback to this area make sure price rejects this area and then look to take it back down into here gotcha that's perfect thank you Raul. yeah no problem oh you said you, um your sls and your take profit of the um of the four hour setup um it depends on the trade um like yesterday no because i was trading an intraday time frame but now that i'm looking for like an overall move and a, like a, a bigger perspective on where we could see price go everything will be based off the four hour <clears throat> in this situation at least you think this situation would be more like a swing type of trade right yeah for sure that's a pretty big move for gj yeah, I think it's going to take some time for it to, like, retrace and get that set up. Yeah, for sure. But the risk to reward will be rewarding. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, if we, like, shorten this area here, we can set a stop loss maybe somewhere around here. So 30 pips, and then our target could be down here. So that's, like, five times our risk. Again, it, it all depends on the rejection and the highs. Um, well, in this situation, the anticipated lower high where that would be, et cetera, et cetera. You know? Hey, Ro. What's good, bro? Uh, sometimes it's not confusing myself, but like uh, sometimes I find, um, let's say, how I can say this? It's kind of like I find some zones on the uh, daily time frame, and I feel like uh, one is more important than the other, yeah. but I can still see a rejection from from it. Like I have a uh, a zone on GJ at 154.750 based off the, the daily time frame. And I saw the, the zone that you uh, spoke about, uh, the red line that you have there. And I also had a, a, a line, but uh, I also have a, um, a rectangle a little bit of, uh, below it, which price rejected a couple of times on the daily too. So I'm like, the zones that are, you know, two next to each other, to, to each other. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like, I, I, I'm kind of confused on that. Like, should I use which one as a take profit? The nearest one or, you know, if it breaks, I can still hold it. Yeah. Or how do I <laughs> wait for this break? In that situation, I would put it to the nearest one. And if it breaks, you, you can continue to hold it. Okay. And uh, for the for this, uh, let's say I see the, um, for example, GJ pulls back, I enter a sale, and I have uh, a support there. And how do I can expect price to break the zone based off the, the momentum? Yeah, pretty much. Because sometimes it will pull back a little bit and then break through it. Yeah, I mean, that from you to actually hold the position to anticipate price actually break like a level of support all comes down to how that candlestick closes. Because okay. we want to see momentum hold around that area. Once you see, like, let's say this is a level of support here. Like, an example, if you see the candlesticks maintaining itself being, you know, huge, right, then you can anticipate price to actually break. Once you see price, you know, approaching the area, you start seeing the candlesticks getting smaller and smaller, you start seeing the wicks, you know, get a lot bigger, right? Then you can anticipate price to actually reject because selling momentum is slowing down. Okay. 
And so let's say uh, for this example, uh, we're basing this trade of the four hour and uh, I'll sh I should wait uh, for the for the four hour candles to close, right? Not the like 30 minutes, one hour. Yeah, 100%. Okay, perfect. Thanks, bro. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Raul, if you don't mind, yeah. um, could you just do a breakdown of GA? I don't know if you, I don't think you trade I, that here, but I, I promise you, out of the last few years I've traded, I've never touched this pair. But, um, okay, so let's go to the monthly. So, like, I mean, if you pay attention to the monthly time frame. Right, what we could see here on the monthly is that there's some form of a level of resistance here that price currently has been rejecting every time it's came up to this area. Rejected it last month and it's rejected it this month so far. So we know that there's some form of resistance in this range, right? We go to the weekly time frame. What we could see is a little bit of a cleaner rejection. So what I'm gonna do is actually adjust this to up here just so we can be a little bit more accurate, maybe even just draw a zone of where, you know, we could actually see the rejection itself and then get rid of this. And what we see is, you know, week after week, price is continuing to trade lower and lower, making lower lows, right? Also, one thing to keep in mind is this area right here, right? So clearly there's a support and resistance level there. Let me, you know, let me put an actual line. There's some form of a level of support and resistance here that price had in decision where once price broke above and maintained itself above for the last few weeks, even though sellers were trying to push price lower, even with this candlestick, you can see it there a little bit better, right? So clearly, you know, we're starting to see that we could definitely see price go bearish. What's only concerning so far is that there's only a week and 18 hours left in the day and price is already leaving this big wick, which the wick could easily fill. That's not really that big of an issue. But there is some form of buy pressure. And one thing that we do have to keep in mind here as well is this level of support that's down here. As you can see, um, price came back up above support and even maintained itself above it when it came in this area over here. Now, if we go to a daily time frame, things are a little bit different. What we have here on the daily time frame is support all throughout, I want to say this range right here. And notice how price ended up closing under this 50 SMA. We also pay attention to market structure. What we have is high, low, lower high, lower low. So what we need to wait for, what could be happening right now is price is actually pulling back to make that lower high point where we could see price actually continue to trade lower back down into this 1.8, 5,500 range. So now let's kind of go down into a lower time frame. Right now, on the four hour time frame, what we can see is that daily market structure, that daily bear structure, and a little bit more detail. Because if we go back to the daily time frame, we're just going to see less detail. If we go to the four hour time frame, we're going to see less detail. But we know on the daily time frame, we have high, we have low, we have lower high, now we have lower low. So these are our main points of market structure. So, what do we see here so far in the four hour time frame? What we see is price currently retesting this previous. Uh, daily lower or lower low point, and this could potentially be the next lower high point. The only thing I would want to wait for in terms of looking to actually go short is some form of a rejection. There's two ways you can wait for this to look to actually continue on hopping in on this trend, right? Let's say, because this is how I always anticipate like my risk reward ratios. Let's say price gives us that clean bearish engulfing. Our targets are going to be right here. Stop loss, let's say, is going to be about up here for two times our risk. So we're gonna get two times risk to trade is, is, is valid there, right? In terms of risk to reward ratio. So that would be a more conservative approach, waiting for the four hour time frame to actually close. A more aggressive approach <clears throat> would be to actually look for an engulfing on this hour time frame. So let's say this hour time frame actually engulfs and then closes right here. What you could then do is enter the same trade, just a little bit more aggressive, maybe with less risk, probably stop loss above this area if you wanna be safe. You want to put the stop loss above this high right here, right? And then you could actually look to target the same target and squeeze a little bit more uh, risk to reward or squeeze a little bit more reward um, in, in terms of then wait like the four hour time frame. Or, you know, things could change by then. Like, let's say this candlestick closes here and the next candlestick is a bearish engulfing right here. And you just kind of move this up a little bit, adjust your stop loss a little bit, maybe leave it a little more conservative there and squeeze a little bit more reward out of it. 
if you're waiting for that hour time frame to close. But before anything, you still want to wait for this four hour candlestick to close. This four hour candlestick is still fluctuating. Price is most likely not going to drop if it's going to drop until this four hour candlestick actually closes. Because again, like all your time frames need to be in sync. So when this candlestick closes, the next candlestick is the one you can anticipate to actually go short. So that's was like a an analysis there on, on GDP AUD. Oh, I mean, I hope that cleared things up for you. Um, only thing I would be concerned with is if price keeps trading higher, make sure price doesn't find support here and then continues to go higher. That's it. I really appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, bro. Bro. Yeah. I have a question. So yeah, my question is like, which one is like more have high probability between uh, trading supply and demand or trading like support or resistance? I mean, it, it's practically the same thing. It's just <laughs> one of them is dumbed down. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I have a question about the, uh, the SMAs. So, say you are seeing um, market structure change from bearish to bullish, and you see a support level being respected. So, you know, you take the pullback into that area for the buy, but at the at that time the red is over the blue in terms of SMAs. Is that a low quality trade? Or like medium probability? I'm trying to picture this. Can you say it again? So you see how the chart is right now, right? Red over blue. Right. So you see, yeah. say price holds that, that support area that you have highlighted. Okay. It pulls back into that area. You start to see support established there and you take the buy. Is that a, is that a bad quality trade? Because the I, red I, would, I wouldn't look to take the buy just because we know where we are in terms mm -hmm. of the daily market structure. Um, I would maybe start to look to buy once price breaks above this hour high. Okay, got you. Yeah, so I would wait for something like this and then start looking to buy. Okay. <coughs> Yo, bro. What's up, bro? Would you be able to do a quick uh, look at Dow Jones? Yeah. Damn, I mean, well, the way I look, it's, like it's almost like the same impression as GJ. We just got to wait for a pullback. But, I mean, if Russia just invaded Ukraine and that was announced, you know, who knows what the market's going to do. But clearly, stocks are crashing, you know, commodities are going up, not surprisingly. Hey, Raul, I just had one question. Like, uh, if... Uh, price of the Dow Jones and going down like that indicates like uh, gold is gonna go up like uh, this this is like straight melting up and will go up gold go up like or is there any chance like gold can reverse to like it can go on sales to if even if the price of US 30 is like I mean, yeah, I mean if you know there's big money being moved out of gold then yeah Oh, so look at the it price. can go, just go like reversely the price of uh, US dollar. That's what I'm trying to ask. I'm not understanding the question very well. Can you repeat that? Uh, like um, just a scenario, like if the price of US 30 is like straight going down mm -hmm. and can can there be a possibilities that at the same time gold is melting too? Like they are inversely proportional, right? Um, I wouldn't think so, but I mean, you know, anything is possible at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they are like their individual pairs that uh, that's how gonna, uh, you're yeah. going to put it up. I mean, you got to think about it like one's a company, well, technically a top 30 companies, and then the other is a commodity. So, okay. I, mean, uh, I mean, a commodity is a commodity, you know, um, and a company, yeah. company, companies can do good, companies can do bad, but there's only a certain amount of goal that there actually is in the world okay uh i kind of understood that i'll just look into it myself too yeah let me know what you find yeah sure yeah so bro, if you don't get the pullbacks you just sit on your hands yeah bro there's nothing to do all right for sure yeah
Any other questions? Yo, so from now to London, like to sit on your hands, what what do you like recommend? What do you do like in your own experience? Go watch Netflix, you know, go do your own thing, like come back to London session. That's right. Run some war zone, bro. Yeah, I was about to say just go run some Call of Duty or something. Yeah, that's literally like you, you gotta take yourself away from the market because then like you're gonna be inclined to want to get into a trade. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Right. You, facts. You step away. Facts. And for no trades, bro. Yeah, facts. Huh. So, so like, uh, go play Call of Duty. Leave the crib. Do do what you gotta do. You know, and come back. So like, uh, it's like uh, setting like strict time rules for the business hour. I will say like for trading. Oh. Uh, do you prefer that or like? Uh, you should backtest as well uh, if you get time or uh, during the day or something. If I ask that, like uh, I used to uh, backtest whenever I get the time. And then on the London session, I was like complete empty. Like, what should I backtest now? So I uh, picked up a random pair and started backtesting it. Now, uh, at this point, like I read some books and uh, means that trying to be uh, productive till uh, uh, from London uh, before two hours before London session to like market overlaps because I trade just London. So uh, would you uh, say that it's the right thing to do uh, in perspective of business and not, not just trading in business, like just being productive on your business hours or you should do whenever you get the time? Um, I would say, you know, do whenever you have the time so then you can actually watch the markets live. But don't just backtest any random bit. <laughs> any random pair backtest your pair. Okay, so be productive whenever you get the chance to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you think gold could have a huge push to nineteen sixty and then come down? Well, I mean, at, at this rate and at this point, like yeah, I don't know. that Russia just invaded Ukraine and that was announced, bro. Like this. So far, like nothing is stopping this train right now. That's what it looks like. Literally. Bro. I mean, it just looks like it's gonna be one of those days where it's gonna be like no trades. Maybe we'll see something new from New York, but like, you know, <laughs> there's like no possible way you could take a position right now, unless like you're like, oh yeah, you know, entry here, stops here, you know, targets, you know, 2000. <laughs> <laughs> bro, Bitcoin is crushing so bad. Wow. Do you think New York is going to be more juicy than London session? Oh, for sure, bro. Once the US market opens, for sure. Probably better to sleep in and then trade Lon uh, New York. At, at this point, I, I'd be very, I, I'm very curious to see how the S&P 500 is going to be doing tomorrow. Yo, Ro, if you're trading like a New York session, what time like do you get up and you see majority of the times you have a trade to um trade? You get a trade opportunity. 8, 9 a.m. is like you. the opportunity. Okay, so you'll wake up like what? 8 and then start analyz analyzing or you wake up like earlier and then... You take a trade around eight nine. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's usually that's the crossover, right? Eight nine. Uh yeah. All right. Yeah. So there's five minutes left in the webinar. Anybody else got any other questions they want to get in? Yeah, real quickly. Do you uh you don't trade Sundays, right? I think in your <coughs> videos, lectures you mentioned how you don't trade it. Uh, I do trade Sundays, but just Sundays aren't, I trade Sunday London session, but I don't trade Sunday like 6 p.m. Um, Sundays typically like, it's either a, a hit or miss for me. I've never been like super profitable on Sundays. Yeah, I feel you. I, I'm thinking about just not trading Sundays at all and just wait till like Monday because it's been, it's really out of whack. Yeah, but you don't have to trade every day. It's just the thing with me is I like to test my probabilities. Gotcha. I have I have a, one more question. So the crossover is like eight o'clock 
uh, New, New York time, but like, would you wait for the crossover um, time or the uh, four hour close at 9, 9 a.m.? Crossover. To, okay. Hero, like, uh, I just want to ask a question related to uh, the structures. Like, uh, uh, I suppose uh, any peer is giving a pullback and uh, how do you really know, like, it's at this point, it's not just giving a pullback, it's reversing, even if it, it hasn't bro broken any structures or you can say it just have broken the higher, uh, the short term, like uh, it from the candle and then uh, pushes downward again, like not make, making an actual pullback, just uh, reversing, it's just reversing. And and the push itself, uh, uh, it's like a real big to break the other structure like uh, gold did uh, in previous days? I mean, typically like when you're gonna see like a change in structure, what you won't see directly right away is like a straight break. What you'll see is maybe something like this, right where there's consolidation, a move down, move up, and another move down. And this is a change in structure. Because you now are not, are you, you're now no longer like maintaining that higher high, higher low, because here there's a low and here there's a lower high. But then the issue you could run into is on the daily time frame, the structure could still be very bullish. So it's like a tricky game to play, and it's it, it, it's like a very situational game as well. Oh, okay. And you have so, to take into consideration the daily time frame, the weekly time frame. You know what areas are being rejected. Like it, it's a lot of putting things together, and it's not just like one specific answer. Okay, uh, so can I just move to the place where I uh, got confused on the goal? Like, sure. it's around, it, it's around like uh, six January uh, on four hour, uh, six January. Uh, it just uh, completely reversed. Uh, I, I think I can see a, a double bottom, but but it's too short to note notice at this point. Yeah, that that one. Yeah, but this isn't a trending market. This is a consolidating market. That's the okay. problem. I got you. I got you. What you're saying. Yeah. And and then like uh, again, the the thing happened on uh, on like twenty eighth of January. Uh, so would you consider that again that a consolidation did in market for gold? Yeah, like all of this right here is a consolidation range. Price really isn't going anywhere. This is a trend. This is a trending condition. This is, yeah. This is a consolidating market. Like, you can still catch moves within this right here, within this right here, within this, right? Within each one of these consolidation phases, you can still catch the moves, but this is not a, a real trending condition, right? Compare gold then to gold now, right? Look at this. It's the really trending. Yeah. With gold, like breaking the previous highs, uh, from like, um, I can say 1908, I think it's gonna like buy at this point. What do you think? 1908, oh, yeah, 1908, somewhere around this zone on daily. 19, you're talking about down here, yeah, you're talking about buying it, Wait, uh, from like, uh, can you go on to like a uh, daily time frame, yeah. And uh, hop on to like uh, two June, uh, two June. Yeah. Uh, so uh, thinking, uh, taking like it's uh, it just straight melted from this point uh, zone. Like now it's trending uh, upward. What do you think? Like it's gonna, it's in a buying condition. And it's break of the, uh, you can say the res resistance zone, and it's gonna uh, get like make new highs or. Uh, there's a point I mean, it can reverse highs, but we just have to wait and see what it's going to do at this point. Because I mean, gold is moving like this because it was heard it was just announced that Russia had invaded Ukraine, so we don't know what's going to happen. Gold could completely retrace, we'll look to buy it again, or gold could you know just keep flying. All right, uh, um, my question was like this uh, I can see a resistance like around yeah, 1952. Well, I don't know how it ended. So if anything, uh, DM me. But what were you saying? Like around 1952, there's like a strong resistance zone from uh, uh, like two touches from, on that resistance zone uh, from 
where previously gold melted uh, uh, around yeah. the area. We're pretty much just going to have to wait and see if it holds. And again, it comes down to momentum. 